Hello, my name is uh, Michael Hargrave. Uh, I work for the Stormwater Department for the City of Hampton. Today we're going to be going over some of the procedures with the John Deere 120. Um, thanks to inspect uh, the inspection that you'll have before uh, operation. All right, so this is going to be the bucket on the end of the arm of the excavator. You're going to check your um, grease fittings, make sure that they're clear of debris. You're going to check all the pivot points, make sure that they're lubricated properly. Um, you're going to check all your pins, make sure your pins are in place, make sure nothing's cracked or has terrible wear on it. Um, then you're going to go to your piston for your bucket, make sure that that has no cracks or damage in any way. And then the, the piston goes into this uh, hydraulic chamber and then make sure that that doesn't have any crack seals or leaks or any problems and going on. Then we're going to move well. down to another pivot point on the arm, which moves the forearm of the bucket. You want to check all your hoses, make sure your hoses are securely connected because they will break off easily. Um, you're going to make sure that you don't have any leaks, make sure all your hose connections are properly done. Um, and just check on the overall wear of the bucket at this point. You have a hook up top um, for carrying loads. Uh, make, you might want to bring the arm back down and inspect that as well. Okay, so when you do your initial inspection also, you want to extend the arm because the arm is going to release the hydraulic fluid back into the hydraulic holding chamber um, on the side of the excavator. And that'll give you a true reading of what your hydraulic fluid level is. If your arm is cocked back to any positions and your compact uh, pistons are not compressed, then you'll have a low reading on your hydraulic fluid sight glass. Okay, these hoses are going to um, maintain various, various operations um, on the arm of the excavator and including the bucket. Um, you just want to check these for leaks, cracks, or um, anything like that um, for your hydraulic fluid leading out to the bucket. Okay, up top you're, you're going to have a series of uh, hoses and grease fittings as well. You want to make sure that um, everything is secure, not leak, not uh, leaking, not cracking. Here, and you also want to check down in your turntable area, um, which turns the excavator and make sure that nothing's leaking, cracked, or have excessive wear. Okay, from inside the engine compartment, we're going to check our oil. We're going to check our hoses. We're going to check our belts. Make sure there's no debris, in, any debris in the fan. You're going to check your radiator. Make sure that you have radiator fluid and check, do an overall look of the engine and make sure that nothing's out of place leaking or has any wear and tear or broken parts also keep in mind when you're uh, climbing on the excavator to check the engine compartment you always want to maintain contact with the handrail and as you move along the top you want to check for condensation and moisture because it is a slippery surface area and it can be kind of dangerous also on top of the excavator you have a hydraulic fill point this is where you put your hydraulic fluid in then you have a fuel fill point you put your fuel in here Okay, so now we have the hydraulic chamber. It has a sight glass. It has a high level and a low level. If you can see um, from the video, the low level is just at the, at, the, it's at the line of the low level because I have the arm extended on the excavator. Um, you also have uh, your filters, hoses, various things going to the hydraulic pump. You want to check for any cracks or leaks and make sure everything's secured correctly. Okay, on this side of the um, excavator in this compartment, you have your radiator, you have your uh, windshield washer fluid, air filters. Um, you want to check, make sure nothing's leaking, make sure there's no debris in the filter. Um, you also want to check your battery uh, post terminals and make sure that they're secure and that there's not a lot of corrosiveness and uh, all the other hydraulic connections that are uh, in here in this part of the excavator. Um, also, as part of the inspection process, you want to check your tracks. You want to make sure that there's no broken tracks, uh, that they're all um, have been maintained. There's also um, <clears throat> a chain that goes across along you want to make sure that all the dirt from this top layer here is all clean of debris a after use uh, I would actually probably consider that unacceptable um, for whoever used the excavator last um, but you want to make sure that you don't have any uh, mud or debris in anywhere on your track and then check it for durability and wear and tear all right as we look through the controls you have your forward and backwards you have hand sticks as well as pedals. Uh, you really want to make sure that you know which direction that the uh, tracks are facing, whether you're going forwards or backwards. As you move over to the control panel to your right, you have different instruments. You want to make sure that that's clear. Uh, your pressure gauges for your uh, oil pressure for your engine, your gas levels, and then you have multi variations for buckets and different uh, bucket attachments that you may use for there. Um, you're going to want to work with somebody as you identify those and what the needs are for the excavator um, as you move down you have a joystick to your right that's going to control your outward movement of the bucket and the inward and outward movement of the arm and then it also goes to the uh, ignition switch which has a safety uh, lock on it which you open that up for your key and then you have the performance of your engine whether you want it economical or high powered and this is the gauge in which your engine's running 
Um, <clears throat> so as you turn that up, your engine will run faster and give you more operations with the excavator. <clears throat> if you move over to the left side, you'll have your left side control panel, which also di moves, does different operations with the arm in the bucket. And then you have your in gear switch. So you cannot operate your bucket or the arm or use either two levers that I've showed you on the left and right side of me without pushing this down and engaging the uh, gears for the arms and bucket. Okay, we're in the excavator and it's running. I'm um, just show you some of the features. If you use your right stick and pull back on it gently, it is gonna raise your arm. If you push forward on your right stick, it is gonna lower the arm. If you push the right stick to the right, it will open the bucket. And the right stick to the left will close um, On the your bucket. left side, if you push forward, your arm will extend. If you pull it back towards you, your arm will retract to you. And on the left stick also gives you your movement of your cab. So if you push your stick to the right, your cab will move to the right. If you push your stick to your left, your cab will move to the left. You wanna be very careful and with your surroundings, you always wanna look up, forwards, back and forth before making a swing with the cab and or with the stick. Also, if you wanna go in gear, your two pedals forwards, if you're facing in the forwards direction, they're gonna move you forward. And then you also have your pedals. If you push them down or pull your sticks towards you, we'll move you backwards in the escalator. Okay, so this is gonna take, I think we're finished with the overall inspection process and uh, the very basic controls of how the excavator works, the John Deere 120. Um, just remember when you operate a heavy piece of machinery like this, you always want to pay attention, keep your head on a swivel and uh, be mindful of what your surroundings are. Thank you and have a good day.